Hello, hello, and welcome to another video tutorial. I'm your host, John Nymeister, aka Andantonius, and today we're going to be talking about some light and form stuff, which is basically shading, its values and edges, rendering, the kind of the stuff you do to finish off a painting. The final noodly bits. Oops, that's the wrong color. Alright, so I'm going to start off here with just marking out some basic landmarks. I'm going to be working from this photo I took of a plaster cast. Do, do, mark that off. Alright. And if you're doing this on your own, I would recommend trying to do this part here strictly from observation. Figure out, you know, the exact proportions and dimensions just by observing it with your eye but I'm trying to go kind of quickly here so I'm gonna shave off some time by just measuring that alright so now I've got the basic shape that I'm gonna be working in established a simple rectangular shape and I can draw since I know that the outermost edges of this are right I can base everything inside off of it and it should be pretty accurate. So if you're doing this, again, I would recommend doing these kind of exercises from photos or from life if you can. Don't try and do this from your head, at least not to, uh, not to begin with. It's better to learn and observe strictly based on observation starting off because ultimately when you're drawing from your head, you're drawing from info that you've gathered from observation. So if you don't have enough info in your head, you're not going to be able to really achieve the look you want because you're going to be struggling with a lack of information. But the more you draw and observe from life, the more information you'll have in your head and the easier it'll be to draw from your head. So generally speaking, when if you're really serious about improving your artwork, you will want to uh, draw mostly from observation to start off and you know it's fine to do some some things from imagination for fun and to keep you interested in it you know it's good to draw a good dragon or elf or warrior every now and again but you also want to be sure you're complementing that with uh, more technical studies and things you're doing from life and from photos to help you better understand how things are constructed in reality and how you would paint them to match that and then once you figure that out it becomes much easier to paint things strictly from your head because you're then relying on all the information you've gathered from what you've observed from life which gives you a lot more to work with than if you're just starting off and attempting to uh, attempting to draw from your head when you don't have enough of a history and experience and understanding to really get the look you want. So starting here I'm just kind of blocking off my basic proportions, cheating a little bit with Photoshop, or actually I'm using Painter here, and this is something that actually gets asked a lot, you know, do you, you know, people get asked, do you use Photoshop or Painter, and ultimately it doesn't matter, you can do you can do everything you need in either program even if you have something like art rage you know that's more than enough to get started drawing if you want to get into painting and stuff i think it's only like forty bucks for the basic license so if you don't have enough to get photoshop or painter then you know find an alternative or use pencils and paper i did a drawing of this same eye actually with just pencils and paper and it was one of the most realistic drawings I've done. So you really don't need a whole lot materials-wise if you want to get started in drawing. All right. So I'm starting to get these basic shapes figured out here. Do, do, do. This is still a little off. I'll take some... Oh, I should... Hang on. I'm going to overlay this. All right. That's not as off as I thought it was. All right. 
And again, that's some digital cheating, and ultimately you should do that more from your observation and just with your eye than anything else. But again, I'm trying to move fairly quickly here, so I'm going to just cheat a little bit on the drawing because this is about painting more than it is drawing. All right, so I'm going to go back in now and just redefine some stuff. I lightly erased over top of this to kind of knock everything back to a lighter gray. And I can go back up on top with some lines. And in terms of uh, layers, I've just kept the line drawing on one layer at this point. All right, so drawing on top, there's a little bit of there's a subtle little bump there. Try not to overstate it too much. And then it goes pretty straight across. And it's got a little corner there. Comes down. It swells out on this right side as it comes towards this uh, form over here. And as you can see, uh, the way I'm, I'm talking about this, what I'm saying is what I'm looking at. So I'm not just, I don't glance over there and, you know, draw the entire contour in one stroke and think it's right. I look at each bit individually and try and really carefully observe it and get it as close as I can in the time I have. So over here, I look at the reference, and then I can see there's a little bit of a bump right here. And I look at the drawing. Now I'm ba looking back at the reference again. Look at the next bump. So you always want to be flicking your eyes back and forth between your drawing and your reference to be sure you're getting things as accurately as you can. Like when I flick my eyes back and forth, I can see that the base of this is getting too wide in my drawing. It actually tapers a little bit more in the reference. So I'm going to trim down on that. That was maybe a little bit too much. I'm going to erase the other line. Lost that. All right. I'm going to lean back a bit. All right, the right side's looking good. I think I need to bring this side out on the bottom a little bit. That's looking better. All right, now for this bottom contour. It goes in a little bit upwards like there's the nose would be over here so this would be kind of the side plane of the nose which is going back into the eye socket so this right here is like a big crater it's all being pushed inwards and so this bottom plane this bottom contour is moving inwards to match that so it goes in a little bit then there's a bit of a bump down here and then goes over and across to that side. And this is a little a little bit overstated, so I'll trim back on that a bit. Erase that down. Alright, so that's the contour established. Go ahead and save real quick. Alright, so now I want to start working on some of these interior forms, and I want to be just as careful with these as I was with the contour. And again, in, if this was an actual cast drawing, I'm not being nearly careful enough. This thing is riddled with proportion issues. But for the sake of this demo, it's it'll be close enough. All right, so now what I want to think about is 3D form and volume. So when I'm putting these lines down, I'm not just looking for the lines as I see them in the reference. I'm trying to think about the forms and the planes that are causing those lines. So like with this this top line here and this bottom line here, that's not just two lines. If we were to look at this from the side, that top line would be here and it would be kind of rolling around. Actually, there would this whole eyebrow form is a big essentially a big cylinder. So it's rolling around and the top line of that would be somewhere in here. That would be this line and then the bottom line would be somewhere in here. So this, I can, I'm feeling out how this is turning downwards as it moves, and then these planes are facing more upwards towards the light source, and these ones are facing more downwards away from the light source, which is where the actual shadows are coming from. So I've got this big form in here, this big cylinder-like form. I could put some cross contours on there to better define it. And then there's this bump up top 
that I added earlier. That corresponds with a subtle form in here. This is kind of spherical. Again, you could put cleaner cross contours on that if you wanted. And then there's some flat forms going on up here. And I'm seeing these forms just based on the, the light and the values that are in the reference. Like, very subtly, this gray is darker than this gray, which is darker than this gray, which is darker than this gray. And essentially what's going on is the darker something is, the more it is turned away from the light source. So if you have a light source coming this direction, down and to the left, and you have a plane like this, it's going to be, it's facing directly towards the light source, so it's going to be completely bright. Whereas if you have a plane like this, it's facing more away from the light source, so it's going to be grayer. And a plane like this, which is facing the exact same direction as the light source, it's completely parallel to it, that's going to be this point right here, where it moves from light into shadow because that's the exact point where the light isn't hitting it anymore and so it therefore moves into shadow and then any planes beyond that are going to be in shadow so this plane would be completely in shadow so if we were to look at that on the cast this plane here would be something like this which is facing up and towards the light source this plane here would be something probably like this where it's not facing the light source but it's still receiving some light this plane right here would be this here which is called the terminator it is where the light terminates into shadow and then this plane here would be these planes which are facing downward and they're a little bit lighter than this because they're receiving bounced light from these planes which are facing upwards towards the light source which is why they're light so that's sort of the bare bones of where you're getting your light and shadows from all right so i'm gonna keep going here establishing these forms there's another cylinder form for this little mass above the eye it's basically a pad of fat so it's got a very rounded shape to it and then it comes up here and flows back into the eye socket it's got a little a little bit of a subtle bump at the bottom here and then it's more concave as it flows down there. And again, this isn't very accurate at all, but it's close enough for this purpose. And then the cross contours, these are going to be rolling away from us as this comes a little bit more toward us and then back away from us. All right, now for this eye here, this is going to be a little trickier. I'll start with the tear duct. And even this, it has some form to it. If we were to zoom in on this, it would be, this is the tear duct, and there would be a bit of a, a plane there, and then the planes beyond. So this has thickness to it. It's not just a flat line. It actually has form, which you can see because it's dark here, light here, and then dark there. So this line of light is that thickness of the eyelid. So I'll need to define that. So I'll start by pulling out, finding the shape of this eyelid. Now these curves are very specific. You don't just make, you know, a standard oval shape. Really observe it. So here it moves over a bit and then it goes up very specifically and then it's flatter on top. So it's not a perfect oval. It's got a one segment here. It's got a segment that moves up here and then it's got a flatter segment over here and then a final segment that brings it down to the corner of the eye. And same with the bottom. It's not just a perfect oval going all the way around. There's a flatter segment around here. There's a flatter segment around here. And there's the long segment over that crosses here and connects the two. If I can get that line right. And that's going to be close enough for this tutorial. And then, again, looking for planes is all about looking for changes in value, changes in the lights and darks. 
So this is a lighter value on the cheek, and this is a darker value in the shadows. And there's a slightly lighter value going in this area. So that tells me there's some kind of plane change. So I'm going to describe that form. And this is the form of the lower eyelid. And it comes, kind of swings out underneath the eye. And kind of fades out. And sorry for the terrible line quality I'm having with this. For some reason, my uh, mic won't pick up from very far away, so I'm having to lean in super close to the computer, which is making drawing a little bit awkward, but we'll make do. And then you can see right here, this is a very, this is a very light spot. This is in full brightness if it were those planes again. So there's, again, it's that thickness of the eyelid. So there's a top plane here and a side plane here. And I need to define that, be sure I define that on my drawing. So it's enough of a change. I'm not going to worry about this one up here because it's very subtle. I, mean, I could define it a little bit, but this one down here is very large and it's a big value change. So I'm going to define, go ahead and define that top plane of that lower eyelid. And then it's got some detail stuff that's going in here. And then there is the sphere of the actual eye underneath all that. I'll define that. And then this iris is humongous. So I'll go back and I'll carve out. And I'm looking for spacing here. I'm looking for the space between this point and this point. And when I do that, I can see that this is getting a little bit too wide. So the space between those two, I mean. So I'm going to bring this out a little bit. And it touches and be looking for look for where things intersect so don't just draw a circle in there because that's what you think eyes are really look at it so it starts here it moves down and it ends here you don't see the bottom part of that circle so in order to get this eye correct we're going to need to define that and it's got the same on the other side you don't see the bottom part of that circle Out, be sure it's actually circular and not a weird squashed oval shape. And then there's this little sculpted pupil going on in there. And then there's a few more subtle forms in here, which you can tell very, again, it's pr you probably won't even be able to see these on the video, but there's a little bit of value change going on in here. So I can tell there's a little bit of a form there. I'll use a thinner line so it doesn't stand out as much. And then there's also some form going on here for like the side planes of the nose. There's a very, there's a much, there's a very clear form here, which is the, uh, right next to the glabella. So this is that, this would be that little triangle between your eyebrows right before it goes into the bridge of your nose down there. And then this is the side plane of that, which leads into the eye socket. And there's a little bit of subtle forms in here. We'll define some cross contours real quick. This form here isn't flat. It's rolling around the eyeball because the eyeball is a large circular form sitting underneath all of the skin. So it's going to deform the surface up here and cause roundness to it. That's also where this is coming from eyeball and fat pads again and then it's got some form here and a few little noodly detail forms up here for the eyebrow could get a little bit more specific with these I'm not gonna get these perfect because it would take hours but I'll define just the general the general feel of these hairy eyebrow shapes those are a little too far over And again, when you're doing this on your own, you should spend much more time on the drawing stage and try and get it as accurate as possible. I'm just moving so quickly because I'm trying to get this done in half an hour or so, which I have 10 minutes left. Hooray! All right, so I'm now going to move under that, underneath that layer, and I'm going to start laying in my values. So I'm going to start with a darker value, and this should go pretty quick. So this will be the value for the background. 
it's on normal. I'm going to have it be a little bit darker, actually. And then I will place on top of that actually the lighter values for the statue cast because this overall is much lighter than anything in the background. Alright, so I've got that basically defined. Now I'm going to go in. I'm going to grab the same background value actually, lighten it just a little bit, and add in the big shapes of my shadows. I'm not going to worry about any detail or any kind of rendering or subtle value changes here. I'm just trying to get the big overall shape of the shadows. So I can see this down here. This is a cast shadow. This brow is sticking out really far in front of the eye socket. Like I mentioned, the eye socket is a, a big crater in the face. So it's moving, it's pushing backwards into the skull. And so the brow is overhanging it and casting a shadow onto it. So that's basically going to be my shadow pattern. Moves up in here a little bit too. Just a little bit on the corner. It comes down on this lower part of the eye. This is rounded out because it's moving over a spherical form, the spherical form of the eyeball. And that'll do. Alright, so now I'm going to grab that same value and I'm going to grab a really big brush and very lightly with my pen just press a little bit. And I just, I'll undo and redo so you can see that. I just added a little bit of dark value more near the bottom. And that's giving me a fall off light because ultimately my light source is above the cast, so anything up top, as it moves upwards, this is all closer to the light source, so it's going to be receiving more light. Alright, so now I'm going to merge my... I'll go ahead and save these just to be safe. I'll merge my lines with my painting, so it's all on one layer. And now I can start working out some of the rendering stuff. Alright, so I'm going to start by just smoothing out some of these edges. I'm going to decrease my opacity a bit. So this part's going to go by pretty quickly because I don't have much time left. So I'm going to start just by softening out some of the edges of these shadows because they're not super crisp. They're blurry in spots and sharper in other spots but ultimately I'm going to start a little bit softer than harder because it's easier to harden an edge than it is to soften one. So and I'm going to also grab that same shadow value and to eye drop to select these values I'm holding down the alt key and then just clicking and that works in both Photoshop and Painter. That's really handy for painting. You'll want to uh, use that a lot because that gives you a really fast way to get the value or color you want if it's already in your picture. Alright, so I'm softening down these lines by just grabbing these values and very lightly, very very lightly, I'm barely putting any pressure on my tablet. Alright, so that's basically established. I'm actually going to go in, do some digital cheating. Where is it? Here it is. Just add water. And I'm going to just use that to soften out these edges just a little bit more. Generally speaking, I tend to make edges a little bit too hard when I'm defining form and a little bit too mushy when I'm being all painterly and compositional, so it's important to keep an eye out for that stuff. Alright, so now getting a little bit more into it, I'm going to start defining some of the subtler stuff. I'm going to grab this value, this darker value, and again, very, very lightly, I'm going to just put down a value, and then I'm going to pick the one that looks most right out of that, and I'm going to just kind of brush this in, this subtle value defining the nose. And then I'm going to do the same thing up in here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start by defining all these terminators. Actually, hang on, I'm jumping between things too quickly. So I'm going to start 
uh, by establishing the more subtle halftones. So that's the slightly darker areas that are in the lights. So there's a slightly darker halftone here. That's this area right in here. There's a bit of a darker halftone up here. And there's a much darker halftone up here. And we don't want these to get too dark. Again, this should be very subtle. You shouldn't get anywhere near as dark as these shadow areas, because if they do, they start to become shadows, and that'll break the illusion of light and form in your image. And that's whether you're painting eyeballs or elves or, you know, space marines, what have you. And that's why you really want to get your foundational knowledge up, because once you figure out how to do this stuff on an eyeball, you can apply it to whatever you want with much less trouble. It's all about learning principles than it is learning tricks. Cause you know. All right. So now I've got the half tones in. I'm going to go ahead and define terminators. And terminators are the again, those are the planes that are completely parallel to your light source, and those will be the darkest planes on the form because they're receiving the least amount of light. So this terminator here, it's very specific in its shape. So I'm going to go back into drawing mode a little bit and really try and define that with some uh, some clarity. All right, so I've got that in. There's another terminator in here. There's one here. There's one here, and these are just, I'm looking for darker values in the shadow areas. And there's one here, there's a little bit darker in here, a little bit darker in here. All right, so now I have those in. Now I want to define my reflected light. So I'll grab my lighter value, and I'll very subtly paint in some lighter lights. Now again, you don't want this to get too bright because if you do, same thing with these halftones, it'll start looking like a light and not like a shadow. So I'm going to use that to real quickly define some of this stuff. And these are planes that are facing downward, and these planes down here that are facing upward, light is coming down from the light source, hitting these planes, and bouncing off in the opposite direction, which is bouncing up into these shadows causing these reflected lights. So this entire bottom edge of that mound form is all reflected light. And then there's the darker sh shadow underneath that. These terminators are getting a little bit hard or a little bit too dark. There's some half tones in there. This starts moving into half tone rather than just being shadow. There's some shapes in here. This line for the iris is actually a form. It's got some darks and then light cutting into it because it's it's a cut in it. So it's a very small it's like slice in the skin, like a scar almost. There's some reflected light on this part of the eye, which is very softly moving into the tear duct. The tear duct is even darker than I have it. Let's see, I'll darken this. There's the bounce light I was talking about earlier for this portion of the eyelid. And that moves out into here. That's getting too light. And this actually becomes, again, this is still in shadow. So even though that's reflected light, when it moves into the light area, it's still darker than all the lights in there. All right, so now I'm going to go in and add some lighter lights. Try not to be too crazy with them. And these are all the planes that are facing the light source most directly. So they're pointing straight up and to the left. So there's some up here in the eyebrow. 
There's a few on this mound in here. There's a little under, there's a little plane underneath the pupil that's pointing straight up. This top plane of the lower eyelid, like I was talking about earlier, is pointing straight up towards the light source, so that's going to be really bright. This form is getting a little too rounded, so I need to sharpen up the edge between the half tone and the shadow. Then some of the planes down here are facing a little bit more up than I have them. Some of the planes in here. Some of this is getting a little too contrasty. There's the reflected light defining the bottom plane of the upper eyelid. And then there is a terminator, well not really a terminator, but there is a darker value underneath which allows that reflected light to be seen. And then it's also a little bit darker still underneath this reflected light. And then also these terminators up here are getting a little too dark. These reflected lights are getting a little too light. So I'm going to make everything more subtle. And that's, I guarantee that's going to happen when you first try this, is the darks will get too dark and the lights will get too light. The half tones will get too dark. Half tones will get too dark. The, high, the highlights will get too light. Because basically we try and exaggerate things when we see them. So you have to watch yourself that you're, again, being really observant of what's actually going on and not just doing what you think you see. Alright, then I'll put a little bit darker in the uh, background here just to help the cast stand out, make it look a little more painted, a little bit more finished. And now basically what you'd want to do, which is all the final rendering bits which I don't have time to get into, is you just go in and play with all these edges. So like, uh, let's see, so like this in here, this area, this is all really soft and blurry, gentle edge, whereas this reflected light underneath that mound of the eye is a very defined edge. So with this, I would just kind of softly blend that out and try and, you know, match the edge as I'm seeing it in life, or in this case, in my photo. Whereas with this, I would maybe, you know, grab a lighter value and try and really cleanly define that hard edge underneath there. And so that would basically be, you know, you could spend, you could literally spend a hundred hours just on this eyeball, which I've done in the past. And it is very educational if you feel like you have the fortitude for it. So that would just be going in and spending a lot of time really defining all those edges, being very careful and observant to each form, getting it as specific and accurate as possible. And once you do that again and again, it starts becoming intuitive and you can start doing it without reference because you understand the 3D, you know, you understand 3D plane structure, you understand how the light would be hitting it and how things would be light, lighter or darker accordingly. So I'm just going through now and I'm trying to just soften out some of these lines so it looks a little more realistic. And I am pretty much out of time. So I'll go ahead and call that good for this one. Do, do, do. Soften, soften, soften. And this is a neat thing too if you go back in and kind of blur everything out to where it's all soft and mushy and not really defined. You can go back in and really carve out some harder edges.
And again, this is just, you could spend hours and hours and hours on this, which I don't have time for right now. So we'll call that good. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me a message. And hopefully I will be able to get another one of these out fairly soon. So thanks for watching and I will see you then.